But what do you make of this decision Republicans are making right now? By the way, I just personally think Moses would have gone to Georgetown, Holya Saxa. But um, yes, we, you know, CPAC has always been kind of the carny show of the single helix wing of the party. <laughs> the problem we have is that wing now has a lot of power. We used to kind of ignore it and roll our eyes. So now it's kind of a trade show for, you know, right wing incorporated. But particularly in the House, Senate's a little different. Uh, it's kind of a runaway train. And that's a combination of folks who think like some of these, frankly, bozos you see at CPAC in ascendancy. Plus, it's such a narrow majority in the House that even if Speaker Johnson was any good at his job, and I don't believe he is, he'd have more to work with. So the Freedom Caucus, small in numbers but big in leverage, are able to drive the car even farther off the cliff. The cliff excuse me. So I think we will have a shutdown. I think it'll be short. I don't know if it'll be that big of a thing by October, but but it's Keystone Cop stuff, and it's not politically good for the party, obviously. And it's also hugely expensive and a waste of time. Robert, what do you think about all this? I mean, let me just well, say I it again. Totally Sorry, I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm interrupting you. There is literally a January 6th themed pinball machine. Who do they think is going to play it? They're all in jail. Yeah, I mean, look, I agree with Mike. I mean, I remember when <laughs> CPAC was a faction of the Republican Party, and now it is the entire Republican Party. And I can, you know, you, you watch these speeches, you see what's happening on Capitol Hill. This is a party now wholly owned by that faction and really marching farther and farther away from the mainstream, farther away from that mainstream is exactly the trouble they got into in the 2022 election when they seeded what should have been a good election outcome for them uh, to the crazies and the wackos that you see uh, that are there now. So, look, I, I think we're re you're resigned to a government shutdown. Uh, I think you're resigned to watching more and more of this sort of Keystone Cops happen. I'm reminded of when Chip Roy, who's a member of that Freedom Caucus, implored the House, which they control, by the way, as you pointed out, to give him something, anything to run on. Here we are closer and closer to Election Day. Republicans can't even run their own branch of government uh, in the House that they control. And I think each day those sort of things give opportunities to the Biden White House and to the Biden campaign to leverage as part of this presidential election. Mike, you talk about kind of the, the CPAC Carney show and sort of that right wing faction. That is the Republican Party right now. That is the party of Trump. Donald Trump has a, a loyal and strong base, but there are not enough of them to win elections. Since he lost the last election, are you seeing him do anything, offer anything in terms of policy, his campaign, his rhetoric that would be attracting any other voters besides his base? You know, let me just say, it's not the entire Republican Party. The problem is, it under Trump, is the governing majority of the Republican Party. There's still a third to 40 percent are out voting for Nikki Haley, who's not going to be the nominee. But those are not small numbers. There are Republican governors who roll their eyes at this. So one of Trump's problems is he has enough to muscle a primary and to have these henchmen run, particularly the House caucus. Whether or not that's enough to run a president, win a presidential election is still an open open question. But no, Trump is not doing anything. Trump's theory is the country is going to fire Biden so he can run the world's biggest Republican primary till November and still win. And I have to say, because the president's numbers are so weak, it's not a crazy scenario. It can happen. The whole key to this election is, can Joe Biden repair himself enough to not get fired and open a vacuum for Trump? The country doesn't want Trump, but right now, but at an equal level, they want to fire Joe Biden, and that is not where you want to be as president. No election tomorrow. It's February. But, we, we, you know, maybe Trump is giving, and the House Republicans are giving Biden tools with all this. I think Robert would argue that. But, you know, it, it, Trump can be unpopular all the way to getting elected here. Biden can't get his numbers up. Robert, can Joe Biden repair himself from what, though? Do you need me to go through the laundry list of, 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 of accomplishments he's had over the last three years? It's a long one. Yeah, look, I think he's, there are a few things he's got to do. He's certainly got to remind people 
of those accomplishments. They happen quickly, signing ceremonies go. They've got to spend a lot of time reminding people of the important piece of legislation that they've put into effect and the impacts that they'll have on real people's lives, like cutting drug costs, uh, increasing manufacturing jobs in this country. The president's economic health has to catch up with what we've seen in the improving consumer confidence numbers, mm. which, to Mike's point, I'm glad there isn't an election tomorrow, but there is in eight months. Uh, so that repair work has to happen. And then, as we talked about, I think he's got to use these these openings and these maneuvers to put a choice in front of the American people about who do you want deciding these things over the next four years. That's a winning combination for Joe Biden.